welcome back to Chuck class. I'm just uh, uh, laughing at some of the stuff that my uh, instructors are doing back there. We're actually going to be not using our Chucks today. And the thing that I'm going to be wanting from you guys is that I've got your, uh, your full attention on what we're doing with our hands. So right now, I just got Liam and I got Brandon in class wondering where everyone else is. Who uh, Maybe they just kind of fell off the face of the world, but that's okay. Because we're going we're gonna to have some fun. All right, so the focus for this next week is going to be on understanding shapes and how they're going to end up, end up becoming uh, intricate with, with, I'm going to say, everyday martial art movements. All right, so let's first things first, let's start with just some basic movement of our hand moving around in a circle, okay? All right, so just give me a big one-to-one. -one. Just pretend like you're holding on to the chuck. Again, the chuck's not in the hand, but I'm just making my movement, okay? All right, so then when we make movements that we see in, that, in class, there's times where we might find that same circle. All right, so let's use this as a, an opportunity to say, hey, wait a second, I've seen that move before. So we're going to use the same example on a double knife hand, okay? And so I'm going to be walking towards the camera, and this is going to be a little bit of our warm-up, is we're going to bring the hands up and around, and then bring forward the double knife hand, and we're going to do that the same hand, the same way each time, three times forward. All right, so here we go. Just a big double knife hand, just don't do it like the way I showed it to you back at Yellow Belt Days. So this is a big circle and a strike. All right, here it goes. Ready? All the way up, and there's one, all the way around, two, all the way around, and three. All right, and slide it back, slide it back, slide it back. Okay, taking five did this, right? All the way around with a hammer fist. There's that scene one to one. All right, so if I was to say, here's my hammer fist, this is part of a circle. You just don't see this part. Now, if I was to bring it around and strike, almost like a back fist, there's your one to one. So let's make this hammer fist, this back fist, this down strike, whatever you want to call it, same thing, big circle and strike. Big circle and strike. Doesn't matter if it's a back fist, a forearm block, or whatever. It's got the same one-to-one, -one, okay? Let's try the other side. Same thing. Big circle and strike. Big and strike. Big and strike. Make sense? Okay. Any other one-to-ones? Well, we have ourselves a couple movements where you see windmills. You've seen that in some of your hardcore sets. And you've got palms where you've got this strike to the groin, where we're kind of doing our big window and we're striking towards the low part of the body. I want you to think about this big circle as something that is a one-to-one. -one. So you're not just going to go like this. I got gotcha. you. I'm going to hit you in the belly button. I got gotcha. you. No, you're going to wind that thing up. So it's going to be big and straight. Okay? Same thing. All the way around, just like your one-to-one -one that you did with the chucks, and straight. Towards the camera. Wind it up. And straight. There's one. Do it again. All the way around. Two. All the way around. Three. So far, a one-to-one -one is pretty dominant in a lot of things that we do. Everything that you see in terms of this circle, you'll find that the same circle exists in a lot of other circles, like out to ends. That is a circle. It's half of one, okay? A middle block, that's a circle. We're not going to go around like this, David. All right, we're going to go halfway, okay? Same kind of thing for a down block. There's a circle. It's the opposite direction that we do for our back fist. All right, so with your one-to-ones, Again, I'm going to feed this into homework, is an example of a strike that involves a one-to-one -one circle. Show me that you say, oh, you know what? No chuck in my hand? No problem. I can give you a one-to-one. -one. Now let's move forward onto a one-to-two, like downward figure eights, upward figure eights, vertical one-to-twos. Let's see how those things exist. First things first, let's put our chuck in our hand, pretend, and give me a vertical one-to-two. Nice, clean shapes. Visualize. Visualize the movement. Stance. Stance. Get low, gentlemen. Come on now, bend those knees. Make those legs hurt, okay? How's the shape of the figure eight looking? Okay, downward figure eight. Give me a downward figure eight. There we go. Nice big movements, clean, large. Keep the stance low. Okay, make sense? Upward, don't want to forget that. There's your upward. Okay, all right. I'm not going to go over every single move with you this way, but I want you to see there's a connection. So what are we going to do with this downward figure eight? So is it possible I could strike and come around the back fist. You might have recognized this from your blue belt combinations when you have a rich hand and back fist. That's a downward figure eight. So let's look at that. Here's your downward motion, coming around, striking. Downward motion, coming around, striking. Okay? All right, let's do, uh, let's do three favorite hand. Just the rich hand and back fist. That's all I want. Ready? One. One, sir. Two. Two, sir. And three. Kia, easy one, right? Okay. So then, what could I do with an upward version? Is it possible that I might be able to strike on this way and strike on this way? All right, come up, Mr. Ben. Hey. All right, let's put some uh, context to this thing here. All right, please teach me. Okay, so 
this is the downward version that Richie and back fist. All right, so coming around here, I can use this Richie in here, and then there's my back fist, downward right. All right, so upward, okay. Maybe I could go strike low first and hit him, and then strike again on the way back. So that way I could find some way of making the shape work. Okay, let's try the other side. I could say here's an uppercut. I'm gonna hit him one, one way, and then I can strike again, bang, hit him again. The goal is just to realize that this upward figure eight doesn't necessarily mean that it's that big. Um, smaller versions of this upward figure eight might be in the version of a small movement, such as your back fist. So if he punches and I go like this, that move, is part of my circle. I'm using part of my upward version of figure eight. That's a tiny version of that. Thing. All right, so think to yourself, downward figure eight, upward figure eight, ooh, vertical. What are we gonna do with that thing? Hmm, so we got this and this. Stir pot, catch a cow, right? right? Okay, so what are we gonna do with this thing? So I could say, here's my down version, right? And I have this head right there. There's my up version, right? One more time, all right? There's my bottom part, here's a punch. I'm coming around here and strike. All right, so I'm just giving you some ideas. Thank you, sir. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a couple of different strikes, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna fit exactly with someone punching at us or grabbing us, but I'm gonna put strikes in instead of the chuck being in your hand. So downward figure eight, we did our rich hand back fist. Upward figure eight, let's do an uppercut and a forearm block, like at an angle. One more time, I'll show it to you again. Uppercut, bring it around. Forearm block, as if something striking on the way up, like a hammer fist on the way up. Okay, one more time. Uppercut, forearm block, other side. Uppercut, forearm block. And if you just kept the movement, you'd say, well, there's my upward figure eight. So far, so good, Mr. Ben? On, 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 the, on that step through, okay. All right, let's forget the step through just for a second. Let's just put ourselves in a good stance and think to yourself, there's an uppercut, we're gonna do this hand over here. Okay, here's our uppercut, there's one. Same hand, strike. One more time. Uppercut, forearm block. Better? Uppercut, forearm block. Two more. Uppercut, forearm block. Harder. Last one. Uppercut, forearm block. Was that better? Yes. Very, very good. Okay. Now, downward figure eight. We had a rich hand back fist. Remember, I'm only giving you a version. Think to yourself, what could I do with this thing? All right? If you wanted to, you could do an elbow and something else. Um, Got your upward figure eight, vertical figure eight. All right, so we've done ridge hands, right? All right, if you haven't done ridge hands, well, I'm gonna tell you that when you do a ridge hand, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck in our thumb to make sure that we're not gonna end up hurting ourselves, all right? So both, uh, both of you gentlemen have done this before, and I want you to think about how I'm gonna strike this thing on the way in. Now, you've done ridge hands where they're like this, all right? Haven't done ridge hands like this yet, haven't, necessarily done rich hands like this yet, but you've done spear hands like that, right? So then, is it possible I could strike on the way in? If someone was grabbing me, is it possible I could strike here? I'm not gonna hit myself. But if someone was grabbing me, I can use that as a means of striking them back, all right? So I could use this part and then that part. If you wanted to, you could say, this is a deflection, I'm gonna, Use that to block a low attack. I'm gonna block it and come around and strike. Mr. Ben, you're up. Let's give him an idea how that's gonna work. All right, no, I'm not recommending this off of a kick, okay? So let's say it's a, a low punch with this hand right here. So I'm gonna say, here's my block, boom. Okay, one more time. Just a rich hand, there's my, there's my block. All right, punch with the other hand. Boom, just using my rich hand to block, okay? One more time with this hand. All right, so once we have it here like this, I'm using that to block the hand, to strike the hand. Coming around and strike, bang. One, two. One more time, slow. One, two. All I'm doing is I'm a vertical figure eight. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna practice with a rich hand and an out to and chop, or a strike, or um, excuse me, an out to and block. All right, so let's do that three times. Rich hand on the bottom, out to win. Ridge hand on the bottom, out to in. How are we doing? How are we doing on the ridge hand? Then hit harder. <laughs> Me or them? Oh, okay. So just just being lazy, lackadaisical. Okay, all right. So then I'll hit a little harder. Ready? Ridge hand and strike. One more time. Ridge hand and strike. 
Any better? Okay, good. All right. Again, if, think of it like this. If I put the chuck in your hand, you wouldn't catch yourself being lazy. Why? Because it would teach you a lesson. It'd bonk you on your head. It'd fall down, bust your toe. It'd pinch your fingers. So you can't take that out of the equation per se. You have, you have to think about the energy that you would put in with that chuck. So now that it's not in your hand, you need to do the same move and just make sure that you're putting that same kind of attention, okay? All right, moving forward. Now, we have ourselves a couple of different ratios beyond one to ones. We have one to twos. Okay, so now let's get into some one to threes. Copy me. See, it's first. All right, let's do a one to three. And we got a downward, or excuse me, a, a vertical figure eight. Got our guard up. And then I want you to switch it to an upper figure eight. Okay? Back to your vertical. Just pretend the chuck's in your hand. Back to your upward. Nice and smooth, no herky jerkies. Mr. Ben's back there calculating how fast you're doing the technique and how clean does it have a perfect circumference? Do you know that word yet? Circumference. All right, all right, here it goes back to your vertical and back to your upward. Now, we're gonna go vertical, upward, vertical, upward, vertical, upward. So it's gonna go slow, stay with me. This is your warped one to three. There's your vertical and there's your upward. Vertical. And there's your upward. If you don't know this, then you can go back to your chuck and say, hey, how am I doing this movement? This is the way you can look at it. Vertical figure eight, upward figure eight. It's both sharing this part down to the very, very bottom. Well, this is pretty crazy. That's a bunch of strikes. Here, here's a real quick question that I'll ask you. At what point can you consider any of these parts of the move a strike? Any and all. So when I make this movement, I could say I'm going to hit with this part. I'm going to hit with this part. I'm going to hit with that part. I'm gonna hit with that part, I'm gonna hit with this part, I'm gonna hit with this part, I'm gonna hit with that part. So they're all available. The question is, is what are you gonna do with it? So think to yourself, I could strike on the way bottom, on the way down, there's my hook punch, just like the slow circle, coming around, strike them again, and then I'm gonna bring this circle around and I'm gonna do an uppercut. All right, let me borrow a pair of those chucks, Mr. Swan, please, just so that they have a, a comparison to this. Now, you don't necessarily uh, need to do this at home, but I want you to see where this is at. I'm Mr. Ben, come on up. All right. I'll give that to you. All right, so you know your uh, warp one to three? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna copy moves. I'm gonna do the upper body moves. You're gonna do the chuck move. Yes, sir. All right, so you're gonna go around, just like I'm gonna go around, you're not gonna go any fast with me so they can see the comparison to this, okay? All right, so uh, we're gonna start low first. All right, ready? There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. One more time. So low, high, around, upper. It's a little faster. All right, three times. I want to see it at home. Here it goes, ready? Low, high, uppercut. A little faster. One, two, three. Last one. Now here it goes. Ready? Rocket speed. One, two, three. Good work, sir. Very, very good. I'll that for a second. Well done. Okay, so that's a tough one because there's a bunch of stuff going on with all that. You've got your vertical, you've got your horizontal. If you didn't know what each one was going to do, then you practice them separately. So, what is this upward figure eight going to do? Well, you know that you could make that uppercut or that forearm block. That's what we talked about before. And what is this vertical figure eight doing? You can practice that by itself. All right, now, when you're doing all these shapes for the chuck, it's easy. Because when you're doing this movement, you're saying, oh, okay, there's a feel to it. And when you're doing that movement, you, got, you get some, some attitude. You find that you can get some good stance as long as you're thinking about that. All right, and then you got your vertical one to two, and you're upward, and all that other stuff. But then when there's nothing, oh, yeah, all right. When there's nothing in terms of what's in your hand, you don't have any feeling that you have that you have with the chuck. There's nothing pulling at your hand. So the shape has to be in your head, which means you have to imagine. Can you imagine? Let's, let's consider this actually before I put this down. All right, so I'm holding on to this chuck, right? Um, this is for, you know, all of my advanced ranks. I want you to consider that there's, there's a transmutation we use with this is that this represents the two bones in your arm, your radius and your ulna. There's two bones here. So when I grip a hold of this thing, the likelihood of me using my chucks out in the real world is pretty slim. However, if someone was to put their hands on me, 
And I can grip a pair of chucks like this. Easily, I can grip someone's bones in their arm. So you think to yourself, ah, okay, we call that a transmutation. So now I'm giving you a transmutation of your chuck movement. And I say, get rid of the chucks for a second. Are the moves still in your body? They're all just ratios, just big circular movements, okay? Um, Brandon, you've been doing black low class for a while now, and there's no doubt that, I mean, if, if you don't know this is uh, a ratio, I got nothing else for you. There's a lot of, I mean, she'd be like, a second? Oh! All right, Liam, don't worry, you'll be in black low class soon enough, I promise, okay? Um, but you gotta remember, all these shapes came from something that you see, now you can't see it, and you have to be able to put it into your head. All right, so what I want you to do, part of your submission, is going to show me, you know, this is probably like, uh, I don't know, a two to three minute submission. I like to see your uh, original idea on a one-to-one, -one, an original idea on a downward figure eight, an upward figure eight, a vertical figure eight, and a warped one to three. I'm gonna repeat all that. One-to-one -one circle, what are you gonna do with it? Don't just say, oh, I'm gonna hit you. Now, give me a good one. I want you to show me that you're putting some heart into this thing. All right, show me this, bringing it around. Show me how that strike would work, okay? A downward figure eight, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna smack and back fist? Are you gonna hammer fist and bring it around a middle block? Your choice. So one to one, downward figure eight, upward figure eight, vertical figure eight, and the last one is your warped one to three, okay? What is the chuck doing with that? All right, before I leave you guys, this is one of the things I want you to think about. When you're chucking and you're freestyling, how do you know what move to do? How do you, does anybody say, hey, by the way, do a hand roll here, unless I told you specifically, say, do a hand roll, all right? Now, I, I know I got some guys uh, uh, like the Hokus will they'll watch this video afterwards, and you have some really good submissions, Ethan and, and Logan. So I want you to take this thing and make this a little bit more freestyle. This is the last part of your submission. After you've demonstrated those things, give me a little bit of freestyle. Don't just say, okay, uh, well, I guess I got the chucks in my hand. I'm going to move around. Okay, clutching. Uh, there's a handoff. Off the wheel. That, that, this is too confusing. It's, it's difficult to visualize that. Sure it is. So when you give me a freestyle portion, just give me something where you think, all right, I can do this move, all right? And then think to yourself, what do I want to do next? If I want double chucks, could I do a rollover? Could I do a roll under? Could I do a vertical one to two? Monkey chase the weasel. Could I do a, a staggered warped one to three? Can I, do, uh, the, can I do the wheel? And the cool part is, guess what? No one's gonna know that you dropped the chuck. You can always pretend to. You can say, all right, here goes, ready, ready? Oh, I dropped that one, I'll do that, just watch. Ready? Oh, here it goes, behind the back. Oh, did you see that? Oh, catch it with the teeth? Yeah. Mr. Bell wants me to catch it too. All right, here's the top. Wait a second, almost there. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> all right. Sorry. All right. But you get my point. So I'm going to repeat all the homework again just because I want to make sure it's very specific. Give me an application of a one to one, an application of a downward figure eight, an application of an upward figure eight, an application of a vertical one to two. All this is going to take seconds. An application of a warp one to three. Think about the movement. Okay. And then give me like, I don't know, 20 seconds of freestyle. Show me some moves. I'll, I'll show you what this is. This is not doing chuck. Ready? Here goes. I have no idea what I'm doing. If you are doing your moves, I'll know. You'll know. I'll know. We'll all know. So don't make it up. Make it real. Okay. And then uh, I'm curious as to what that what that's going to do for you. Um, it, it, I did this a long time ago for one of my tests where I I made a form based upon the uh, uh, it. I made a form that. I didn't have the chucks in my hands, and I tried to be able to make it as a, uh, as a spotlight. And it took a lot of thought because I, I really wanted to make sure that I was able to showcase what the chuck movement was. So when you put that part of the spotlight in there, please make sure that you're putting your heart into it, that you're not simply just doing the moves. Uh, again, when, when you guys uh, go crazy with the chuck in your hand, it really shows. Liam and Brandon and, and Logan and Ethan, you guys are so good at what you do. Uh, there's a couple of faces I haven't seen, you know, pretty much at all with the uh, my Chuck class, you guys know who you are. Um, make sure that you guys are, you know, give me everything that you got, again, without the Chucks. Any questions on that, Mr. Ben? Okay, all right, so I'm looking for a submission this next week. You guys know what the homework assignment is. Please turn it in, Dalton. Forget about this assignment.
All right, hands behind the back. Good work today, Chuckers. Ready, jump. Thank you for teaching me. And today you are dismissed. Well done.